Ought to be away from the thing God won't stop till I let it all in. Ought to be away from the thing God won't stop till I let it all in. To the winds of the east and the element of air, come. Show me what it is to live from the place of the rising sun. Show me what it is to live with impeccable vision for life. Show me the big picture and how to anchor that into my life. Great snake, mighty serpent, Apu Giza. Humpwe, humpwe, humpwe. Teach me what it is to feel awakened in my magic and creative potential. Aho. To the winds of the south and the great fires of transformation come. Show me what it is to shed my past, to let it go completely and to step freely into my path of beauty. Great wolf, mighty puma, Apu Sedona, Humpwe, Humpwe, Humpwe. Teach me what it is to have the freedom from my past fears and anxieties shedding them and being in deep relationship with the physical instincts and Mother Earth. Aho. To the winds of the west and the waters of the earth come. Show me what it is to embody the fluidity and power of my emotions. Show me what it is to be fearless and protect this medicine space. Show me the way beyond death. Great Elephant, Crystal Condor, Apu Shasta, Humpwe, Humpwe, Humpwe. Teach me what it is to understand and nurture myself before reaching out to help others. Aho. To the winds of the north and the fertile element of earth come. Ancestors, grandmothers, grandfathers, ancient ones. Show me the magical, mythical journey possible here upon the earth. Great owl, mighty hummingbird, Apu Bora Bajor, Humpwe, Humpwe, Humpwe. Teach me what it is to have the ability to see and understand what others are not yet ready to. Mother Earth, my sweet, sweet mother. We've gathered for the healing of all of your children, the stone people, the plant people, the four-legged, the two-legged, the creepy crawlers, the fin, the furred, the winged ones, all of our relations. Father, son, grandmother, moon, star nations, you who are known by a thousand names and you who are the unnameable ones, thank you for bringing us together today to sing the song of life. Cosmic Father Time, Cosmic Mother Space, Aho. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be pulling together the last few lessons into why we searched for our spirit animals and why we also search for our sacred, sacred sites. And it is because they are here to be your allies and they are here to help you hold and create sacred space when you are working with any part of energy. So it can be as simple as going into a meditation or as complex as doing an energy healing. It is something that holds the container of the space around you and protects not only your energy and energies flowing inside of your vessel and outside of your vessel, but it also holds the space for whoever is in your presence. And it doesn't just mean in your physical presence, it means in your um, awareness. So for me, if I'm working with somebody and it's through a Zoom call, it is holding their energy as well. It's having the intention to hold someone's energy. And for me, as you guys have heard um, in the last week, this is the most important thing. I know I've talked a lot about protecting your energy and I have an episode about protecting your energy, which I will link below. But this part of protecting your energy, it comes from within and it's not only coming from you. When you did the, the meditations and the journeys to try to find your animal and your, your animal allies, the reason that that 
is the, the like foundational part of this whole process is that they are the ones that actually help to hold the space. It isn't just you, meaning you, the vessel of you that is powerful enough to hold away all denser energies, right? That's not, number one, I don't believe that's why we're here. And number two is you aren't strong enough. You know, we have the power and the control when we're consciously aware of what you're letting in and what you're letting out. But the truth is that usually our attention spans are divided in so many different energy threads that you're not like able to, like investigate or be the policeman for every single thread that's coming through your body. And when you call in your allies through the spirit animals and through the Apus or the sacred sites, you're pulling in the energy from those places and from those animals to help almost like have your back, like literally hold the space. So that's what a medicine wheel is. It is something that is literally held by the guardians of you and as we've talked about before i don't believe that these guardians are strangers to you i think that they are incarnations of you i think that when an animal um, comes to you it's because you've embodied that animal many lifetimes and probably are even currently having a lifetime as that animal and you're pulling that thread that parallel life thread into this now moment and it's standing with you. And same with the sites, you feel a connection to a site because you've lived there, you've done worship there, you've been in sacred space there, and you know that energy ley line. Now, it doesn't mean that you've done that in this present life, but again, it means that you've had lives where you've done this work there. And you're literally tapping into that energy thread or that ley line and bringing it into this now moment. So when I say you're you're pulling in all of these pieces to help you hold the space, it literally is that. When you have the intention to create something that is bigger than yourself, and by that I mean when you work with spirit, we probably all have had um, synchronicities happen where you realize it's much bigger than yourself. But especially when you're working with energy for others or even in, even for yourself, you will realize that this is the time that magic happens. And magic happens because you are creating the space for it to happen. So for me, this looks like when I open sacred space, especially for someone that I'm working with, I let my personality, once I say my prayer, I've cleansed my space, I let my personality take the back seat and I allow the energy that is clean to come through. So now I know anyone that's coming through from that person, whether it be their higher self or, or someone in their lineage or ancestral lineage, I know it's of a highest energy, of the highest light. I'm not letting through any energy that well, that is not, I'm not, okay, wait, let me put it this way. Energies that are dense can, if they're attached to that person, it, it can still be there and I can feel it, but I'm not giving them the stage to act out. I guess that's a good way to put it. I can feel them and I know they're there, but I'm saying there is enough light in this space that we can hold it. We will not, we're not an empty vessel allowing anything to just shoot through. So that allows me to feel into where that denseness or sticky sensation is and to remove it. But the only way I believe that I'm able to do that is because I have these allies holding down the fort. It feels like literally holding the bubble. And actually that is a good reference because it almost feels like a dome that you're holding around you and the other person or if it's just you doing sacred work around you. And and I feel like when you invite all of these allies to come in and be a part of a ceremony or a, a healing, it's something that with the, the intention, you are creating something with something much, with, a, with guides and spirits that are much bigger than this plane, which that creates the space for magic to happen. Now, 
if you're working with someone else, it takes that other person's energy and higher self to also be present in that space, <clears throat> metaphorically, not physically, to create the magic with you. So I don't do healings for anyone that doesn't specifically search me out and know that I am the right match for them to work on something. That is something that I realized, well, actually at the very beginning, you cannot heal someone that is not ready to be healed. No matter how much magic I create in my space and my allies bring, if that person's consciousness or personality isn't ready to surrender to the process of their higher self to help to allow the healing to start, there is nothing that I can do. So that's why they always say a healer isn't a healer, it's just someone inviting you back to yourself, back to home and finding and allowing that person to feel back safe in their vessel. So in, in today's podcast, I aim <laughs> to help you guys create your own sacred prayer. And this is not um, any based on any religion. Um, obviously, I learned it through studying shamanism, and I've pulled pieces from different teachers. But this is how I got to the point of having my own personal prayer. And I hope that this is going to help you guys to create your own. And as you will see as we go through this, it will be very personal because you're calling in your own spirit animals and the messages that that's, that animal brought to you. Now, when I say that, it could have been something that you pulled in through one of your clairs, like they, you got the download of the message, you just felt the message, or it could be that you referenced through um, uh, animal guidebooks and you pulled out the words that that rang true for you through that animal's message. And there is no judgment. So some of mine came through me looking through books because remember when I created this prayer, it was at the beginning of my journey. I mean, I think I was maybe six months into my journey when, when I started this process. And some of my animals were very intense and I knew the message, but others were more el elusive and, I, and they weren't as clear. And what I know now is that the reason the ones that aren't clear with the message, it's, it's that they're there, they're there to hold that space with you, but they're not yet ready to do the work yet with you. You're not, or you're not ready to do the work with their energy, but they want to know that they're they want you to know that they're here for you and they do have um, an energy to share with you. So in that case, yes, use the reference books and pull out the, the words, the phrases, the things that ring true or, or um, like give you a ping of this feels like a medicine that I need. So um, I'm going to also include, I did a PDF that walks you through this process. And as we go through, if you're watching on YouTube, I will share the images um, as well of the PDF. But the first part we go to is the South. And as you remember, the South is about shedding and letting things go. So the framework of the opening prayer, and again, this is just a place to start. Obviously, as you go deeper into your journey, you will create words and change them as you get guidance to. So don't feel like you have to stay within this parameter. This is just an idea of how to, to get you into each direction. So in the South, we start with, to the winds of the South and the great fires of transformation, come. Show me what it is to shed my past, to let it go completely, and to step freely into my path of beauty. Then you have great, and then I say wolf, and this is where you add in your, your spirit animal. So I have two in this, um, in this direction, which is the, the wolf and the puma. So I invite them in, and then I pull in then um, my apu, which for the south is Sedona. And as I pull in each and I name each, I kind of have a, a beat, like a pause to acknowledge them. Um, it, for me, feels like a, a okay, they're, I don't have, I don't usually get visuals, but some people will actually see them come in as they call them. 
If you can do that, amazing. <laughs> For me, it's more of like a knowing that their energy is here because I feel it shifting in the space. So I call in my my wolf and my, my puma and my apu sedona. And then I say, come. Or you can say, humpwe, 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 which humpwe is a Quechuan term that means come in, come back, return. It is in these words or this phrase that you realize that you're literally just calling energy that you already have existing out in, in the ethers, like in a parallel life. It's not that you're calling in a foreign energy. You're calling yourself back. And then you have teach me what it is to. And here is where you will put in your your animal's message, your Apu's, your, your sacred site's message, and what's personal for you. So for me in the South, I have teach me what it is to have freedom from my past fears and anxieties, shedding them and being in deep relationship with my physical instincts and Mother Earth. So again, I haven't revised this these main phrases from back um, when I first created this sacred prayer and the reason is it rings true for me still in each direction the message that I came up with back then and you know finessed into a sentence that made me feel like okay I'm embodying the spirit of that animal it feels like it's still needed. There hasn't been something that has changed in my connection to the South. So then I always then after I feel that I've said what I am asking them to teach me in this in this space, I say a ho because for me, it's like acknowledging that they are here. Now, you don't have to put that part in, but I personally like to just because I want them to know I see them and I feel them. So then we go to the West and in the West, we say to the winds of the West and the waters of the earth come show me what it is to embody the fluidity and power of my emotions. Show me what it is to be fearless and protect this medicine space. Show me the way beyond death. And then we say great and you insert your animal. So for me, it's the elephant and it is my crystal condor and my Apu Shasta. And then you say come or you say hump way three times. And then it's teach me what it is to. And again, you go and you find the messages from these sacred sites and this animal and you, you fill out a, a sentence. So for me in the West, it's teach me what it is to understand and nurture myself before reaching out to help others. Now, this still rings true for me. Back when I started this journey, I it was more in my personal life that I would do this. And, and you know, if you have this tendency where you put yourself last, it carries over in every part of you. It's not just about how you are with your family or your loved ones. It is you give because you. it makes you feel good to give. And what I learned through and what I learned that I needed to, to work on for me and in, in my emotions is how can I fill others if I'm not full? So that's why I still keep the teach me what it is to understand and nurture myself before reaching out to help others. Because if I were reaching out to help anyone else when I am not complete and not full of my own vital life force, what comes across is not clean. So for me, this still rings true in the West. Then we go to the North and we say, to the winds of the North and the fertile element of Earth, come ancestors, grandmothers, grandfathers, ancient ones, show us the magical, mythical journey possible here upon the earth. And then we say great. And for me, it's owl and hummingbird. And my um, Apu for that direction is Bora Bayor, which is in um, Indonesia. And then I say come or humpwe, humpwe, humpwe. And then my message from the North is, teach me what it is to have the ability to see and understand what others are not yet ready to. And again, 
you will have most likely one, sometimes two spirit animals per lo per direction. So feel into what that message is from that from that um, animal and incorporate into something that feels earthy, right? That feels like. So I think I've talked about this before. In the beginning, when I got the owl in the north, I thought, how is the owl related to earth? <laughs> and and that doesn't matter. And I, I think I mentioned this before. Let your intuition be your guide. It is guiding you for a reason. So now, almost two years later, I know the reason the owl came for me in the north was that the owl represents wisdom and an all-seeing. And what I'm here to do is to pull that wisdom down into the earth. So then I look back at what I had put down as my teach me and, and it's teach me what it is to have the ability to see and understand what others are not yet ready to. It rings true still. So it's like, as you go through this process and as the, the months and years roll on, you, you kind of check back in and see is that still what I'm doing? Is that still what the medicine that I need there? And I also would like to say that for me, my original four animals have stayed true and they are still a part of my opening prayer, but I've added to them. Sometimes an animal will decide that you've gotten their medicine and a new animal will come in in that direction. And it's allowing the guidance as it comes and not judging it. So let's say if my owl decided to fly away and something else came in, I would have to see, okay, now go back to the beginning. Why is this animal coming in and what is it here to teach me? So there isn't a judgment. It's more of a guidance from soul. So just don't have a judgment about it. And then finally, we go to the east, and in the east, we say, to the winds of the east and the element of air, come. Show me what it is to live from the place of the rising sun. Show me what it is to live with impeccable vision for life. Show me the big picture and how to anchor that into my life. And then I have great, and we insert our animal here, and I have the snake and the mighty serpent and Apu Giza. And I say, teach me what it is to feel awakened in my magic and creative potential. Now, again, when we go back to when I created this, I needed this. This part of me was missing. I had been working in a corporate job for so long that I forgot what it was to create something completely from my own vessel. And I remember in my first healing session with Lori, my original shamanic teacher, Lori Andrews, that's what we worked on. It was allowing that creative potential to flow again. And what I know now is that we are all here to create and birth ideas, writings, teachings, art, the problem is that we've been conditioned to go into working for someone and, and, and almost trying to deliver their dream or their creative potential, which that's why there's so much disconnect in the world is you don't know, none of it's yours. And so then you eat your feelings, you, you know, you lash out at people. You don't know how to become the vessel of releasing energy. So in the East, we are all about creating new and birthing. And I needed this. I needed to know how it was to feel awakened in that magic and creative potential. And I remember after I, um, first created this, I think we created it, let's say in December or it might've been November of 2019. And that it actually was that next week was when Richard brought up creating a podcast. And remember I had at this time also just learned about human design and I knew I had to be invited to something. So I was like, okay, there's an invitation. But of course I had so much fear about it. So I was like, absolutely not. But then I realized fear cannot be the thing that holds me back. And by starting to tune into the, the medicine that was around me, right? Like, again, the snake was about creation and allowing that creation to weave its way in, even if at that time my personality was terrified. <laughs> and I remember, and I think I've talked about this, like I had to have 
everything as perfect as I could get it before I would create a podcast. So for example, um, my office, it's all wood floors and it it's, um, has a lot of windows. So there's a lot of echo here. So I built a wall full of felt, uh, things and, and I had to have a rug and I had, you know, I had these ideas in my head of when I, when I have this, then I will be ready. So it took me another four months to get to the place of, okay, I have nothing else to keep, you know, holding me back. So I, I just did it one day. I just did it. And from then on, it's like it literally taking that first leap of faith. And I know that is funny in saying it, but that's why this podcast has this name is that on the other side of that abandonment or that letting go is everything. It becomes easier every single time to let go. And I know you guys maybe don't believe me when I tell you, but it was extremely like extremely difficult and I was terrified. So I know that this part of my opening prayer really helped me to see once I got past that first initial episode that I could let go and I could let go into whatever was meant to be, right? And then even though I had an idea of how these podcasts and the episodes would go, I let go into spirit and I let spirit dictate what needed to be said each week. So that's part of it too, is that when you realize that your mind is trying to stick to something, um, you, you are out of flow. You're not in the creative potential. Creative potential comes in a flash and it's not your mind creating it. It is spirit creating it through you. So yeah, this part of the prayer is still, again, rings true for me. And even if I think like, okay, I got that podcast thing nailed down. I'm not afraid of it anymore. Well, then the next thing was doing video and going on YouTube. And then the next thing was creating the energy tribe. And it's like, all of these things take creative energy to envision and create. And it's getting out of my way in order to allow that to flow. So yes, I'm still in alignment with the prayer that I created a while back and it's still bringing that energy to me. So therefore I know that these allies are still in my life and helping me birth these things. Then we go to Mother Earth. And this is Mother Earth, my sweet, sweet mother. We've gathered together for the healing of all of your children, the stone people, the plant people, the four-legged, the two-legged, the creepy crawlers, the fin, the fur, the winged ones, all of our relations. This part to me is you are calling in healing for every existence on this planet and you're not just discriminating discriminating against anyone's not even the creepy crawlers <laughs> which i you know i <laughs> but it makes me feel like no matter what the energy is that you're creating you're asking that it is healing for everyone not just for you and the person that you're working with or not just for you in your own space you're opening it up the intention for everyone and i personally feel that i feel like if you can allow that energy to flow outward, it is received by those that are ready to receive it. And then we honor Father, Son, Grandmother, Moon, Star Nations, Great Spirit. You are unknown by a thousand names and you who are the unnameable ones. Thank you for bringing us together today to sing the song of life. And then I add in Cosmic Father Time and Cosmic Mother Space because that is our predicament, for loss of a better word. We are in time and we are in space in this moment for a reason. And it's to bring all of that energy that you've created into the now moment. So when I honor Cosmic Father Time and Cosmic Mother Space, it's saying, I get it. I'm human. I'm having a human experience and I'm letting that energy flow through this vessel into this space now. So even though I'm asking help and support from from the universe, I get that that help and support is coming for the healing of us in this time and space. And that is it. So then once we've opened up that space, 
now we are free to feel the vibrations and the love that comes through. So as I said earlier, for me, it's letting go of my personality and knowing that whatever is meant to flow in that time and, and that space is meant to flow either for the healing of me or for another. And I don't feel concerned that even if I see an energy, um, like for example, in a healing a few weeks ago, I saw Kali come in and Kali is, can be a very, I mean, she's intense. She has like uh, a lot of power and she's in her like total uh, sacred feminine and divine destruction. <laughs> but, and she came into my body. So then I became that and it felt like, how do I say it? It didn't feel dense. It felt like the most electric energy and so powerful. And I remember after that session, I kept saying to the person that I was working with that, holy shit, like this is intense energy. Like you have some crazy support behind you because I knew that there was nothing to fear. Obviously, Kali came in as a way to support this person through what she's going through. And that to me felt beautiful. And I knew that if it wasn't clean and, and, and for this person's greatest good, my guides would not have let that in. So that's how I feel like now I, when I let energies come through my body, as long as I feel protected, I'm not fearful at all. So even if we go back to my first experience with ayahuasca and allowing all those entities and animals come through, I remember just feeling like they were curious and there it, it felt like in a way kind of interesting for my personality to witness them through my vessel, but I didn't feel fearful. Um, and I think for me, having that sacred space open it allows you to let go a little bit more. You know, it allows you to really abandon the mind and the controlling part of what's happening here. And can I, can I really feel safe in this? And can I really let go into this? And the truth is that when you have released the tight grasp of reality <laughs> to the magic, yes, you can let go. And then what's on the other side of that is beyond our knowing. And that's the beautiful part of this, right? So I, I think that, you know, it's something that I, I know will be a helpful tool to everyone, regardless of what your path is and how you're bringing your magic. When you realize that you have these allies here to support you and they are asking to be brought in into the magic work, then, you know, really the sky's the limit on what you can bring through. And I will say... It's only through using this practice and this prayer that I even discovered that I had Claire's or that I had these, these gifts. Because and I will say, when you allow this energy into your space, everything else, like the chattering in your head and the, the daily tasks and whatever, the laundry and all the things, it quiets down so that you can hear spirit and you can hear your actual self, meaning your soul. So it was only under the sacred prayer that I actually found my gifts. And it was only through practicing in sacred space that I allowed my gifts to become stronger and also trust them. And I think that when you are just starting it feels like it's a, it's a it's just a safe space for you to start feeling into what are your gifts why are you here what is your magic and let's say if i were to try to do a healing without opening this space i wouldn't my mind wouldn't be turned off yet and i don't think i would really understand what's coming through for that person and what is me interpreting what that person is needing you know so this dome or bubble of of protection and love has become just integral in in my development in spirituality and in knowing what I am here to bring 
So I really hope this for you guys and I hope that you tune into it and don't dismiss it as something that's a little bit too much <laughs> because it's the cornerstone of everything. And if you don't have safe space, you will never be able to differentiate who, who you are to who some, someone else's energy is, to a spirit, to a guide, to anything because the space isn't clean. Where I didn't see Kali, for example, I felt her and I knew, I know this, I kn and I didn't even really know anything about Kali, but I knew that energy and I, I got like a quick visual of just like all these arms and then I just knew, it, almost like a download, I knew who she was. And again, if I hadn't created this calm bubble, I don't know if I would have been able to interpret the energy. So even when I think about going into the records, there's a prayer to go into the records. And basically it's kind of the same thing of closing down all of the distractions and going in. And it's the same idea of if we don't quiet down and tune into the subtle senses, right? how will we ever get to that place of feeling them and knowing them? And for me, this is the first step of how I got there. And then I also just want to talk about going forward. So in the, in the energy tribe, I've asked how deep do we want to go down this path? Like, <laughs> you know, I've been chatting away in this podcast, like about my experience but I can feel the need to help guide others more so than just entertainment. And that doesn't mean that everyone's path is the shamanic path. And like I said, I didn't even know what a shaman was when I started down that path. Um, what I believe is it's an ancestral way for us to tune in to what we already know deep down. You're not going to develop any new skills that you haven't done for many lifetimes. <laughs> because that it doesn't work that way. For me, every single thing that has um, illuminated in myself, it's been a remembering of, I've always, even from a little child felt these things, but I, as we go through life, you know, I started denying them or letting them act, you know, to the back and I didn't listen to them, but they're just reminders of, of things and gifts that you've always carried with you. And in this incarnation, they're ready to come forward. So the question that I asked the energy tribe is how deep do we want to go? <laughs> because this sacred prayer and the spirit animals and the sacred sites, it's just the foundation. You have to have that to do any, any energy work. So that's why I move forward with this, but going forward, you know, I only know how to teach the way that I learned and taking the steps that I learned to go deeper into me. And so in saying that, I'm not yet sure how it's going to look, but my goal is to start teaching specifics on how I learned all of the things that I have up to this point. And it will be through the shamanic way. Um, you know, when I even say that there are things that rang truer for me than others. So for example, journeying, I, that's more of like a guided meditation. I've never really identified with it because you, you will be on your own journey and the, the person that's facilitating the, the guided journey, you know, will be like ready to move on to the next step and maybe you're not there yet. And so I always felt like frustrated by the notion that we are all on the same linear time schedule of when we move to the next thing. <laughs> so journeying for me always was a difficult one. And, you know, if that is the case, I still believe that it's meant for others. And I, I plan to share it because I think just like guided meditations, it works better for some people and that's okay too. So you know, I'm going to share it all, but I also am going to be honest. Like what, what did I identify with more than other things? But I think if you understand why each of these pieces are here to create a mosaic, 
you pull and you use what works for you in your own journey. So even when I talk about healing, I go back and think about how we were taught and what she left so much room for interpretation because each person carries their own gifts, right? So the way that I do healing is completely different than the classmates that I had because it was through working with other people that I realized where I'm where it's easier for me to help people or, or, or how I interpret energy or how I feel things and see things versus, you know, like I always say, some people are way more visual. I way, am way more embodied. Like I get into the energy and I let it flow through me if the person can't f make it flow themselves. And it makes sense because even in my own healing, I, I let energy come in and embody in this body. So... In saying that, there isn't one clear shaman way. These are just tools that you, people always say this, tools that to put in your tool belt of getting you to the place of where you understand your magic. And that's when I look at it that way, I feel like, of course, you sh I should share all of it because how else will you guys know yourself? <sighs> so understand that this is obviously a work in progress and I'm just talking it out as we're going, but I am feeling that call to go deeper. Um, and, you know, I hope that this rings uh, true for some and there you have curiosity for others. And even if you're not sure, you know, I think that there's a reason that you're in my energy and I am here to help. Like this whole journey, it's funny, has been about my journey of healing myself. But I know through the things that I um, listen to is that when someone shares their story, it becomes real. And it's no longer this, I don't know, this goal or this, this hypothetical. It's actual a real person explaining their real situation. And then for me, it's more relatable. So yeah. That's what I'm still here to do. And it's still a leap of faith and understanding. I have no clue. You know, it's not like I thought this is where we were headed, but I'm following the energy and the energy in the last few days has been very specific. That is time to teach um, and go deeper. So again, I wouldn't know that if I didn't have my prayer to guide me there. <laughs> so I hope that this has been helpful. I hope that you guys are getting something out of this. And as always, I would love to have you in the Energy Tribe. Right now, there are 16 members and we are broken into four groups and they're each by the element. And um, my dear sister Mina helps to figure out who is ready for what energy and she has the pendulum helps to not only decide what group each person subgroup I guess each person goes into but also who specifically they are there to work with and that person let's say are is they're specifically here to work with may not be in their group that they're put into. So then a connection not only is made in the subgroup, but also with the, um, the other person in another group. And all of that is just so far in the unraveling of how this has come about. It takes more people than myself to, I guess, see how this was meant to form because I didn't see this in my, I didn't know, I remember feeling overwhelmed by all the energy, but I would never have um, realized that by breaking up the groups would then allow others that are more quiet to have a space to be heard in a smaller environment. And I just realized that it takes the community and the tribe for us all to come together to produce something much bigger than one person. And that is how energy flows through us all. So I, again, would love to see you there. And um, if you're not able to join on the normal Zoom chats, which is every other Friday at 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific, Pacific Daylight Savings Time, you can always find the recordings on the YouTube channel. And if you are watching on the YouTube channel and you want to join in, but you can't make that Zoom chat, please reach out to me your energy is still needed in these groups. So 
if you're not able to make that that larger group chat, each individual group works together to find a time that works for everyone in that individual group. So I still would love to hear from you and I don't want to exclude anyone because of the time of their uh, larger group meeting. So I hope to see you guys there and just know that I just feeling the call to invite you to know yourself more.